Hello and welcome to episode 44 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have back on the show Ron Batra as our special guest. Ron is an executive architect, a technology innovator and strategist in IoT, cloud and digital transformation. In this week's show we'll be talking about, according to a study by Cisco, organisations Organizations don't have a great track record of successful Internet of Things projects. 26% of companies have had an IoT initiative they considered a complete success, while a third of all completed projects failed. The study by Cisco showed that 60% of IoT initiatives have stalled at the proof of concept stage. Hi Dave and Ron, a warm welcome to you both. It's great to have you both back on the C-Suite show this week. Thank you, Brad. My pleasure. It's great to be back, Brad. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And look, Ron, it's so great to have you back. So that's, uh, that's absolutely awesome. I'm really looking forward to a great show. And look, I know I apologize back in the Australia show, but please bear with me because I do have a bit of a cold at the moment and it's, uh, it must be playing uh, havoc with my sinuses and stuff. So uh, apologies for that. So look, I've got a, an opening question uh, for you guys. And I'll, I guess we'll throw it to you first, Dave, to open the show up. Is uh, What can leaders do to ensure more of a, an Internet of Things success with you know, processes and projects? Yeah, I was very surprised that, uh, you know, we had this kind of a level of failure uh, and even stalling the projects. So it's like only 26 percent or we'll say round that down to 25 percent of the of, of the projects actually succeed. And that's, uh, you know, very different to my experience out there. But I, I think a lot of uh, companies are going at it with their own, you know, set of talent, people, processes in the organization and not necessarily, you know, looking at a serious aspect of IoT and spending the money and getting the time and, you know, getting the, the research and the development and the planning in place to make sure they're going to be successful. So I suspect a lot of these are just installing sensors on things and gathering information. They really don't understand what to do with the information once they gather it, the type of information the sensors are going to spin off. One of the patterns that I found for success in any IoT system, and the, the C-level folks should really kind of take note of this, is there has to be an extraordinary amount of planning. Because in essence, you're building an application. You're building something that, and it's a distributed application, something that's absorbing data from you know, many different devices. The data is going into some sort of persistent storage, like a database. We're running real-time analytics and also near-time analytics. And then the predictive analytics on the systems, that information is going back into process controls that actually, you know, carry out actions on the particular devices we're dealing with. So it be becomes a not necessarily unsurmountable from a technological point of view, but really kind of um, very complex in terms of the planning that needs to go in it. And I think that many of these things, if we do a triage on the failures, they probably underestimated the amount of planning time effort and also technical skills it takes to kind of take these things on. I think they're learning the hard way. Well, I don't know, what do you think, Ron? Um, I agree with uh, almost everything you said, Dave. Uh, actually, I agree with everything you said, Dave. Uh, I would just like to add a few, few more things. Um, yes, the technology is complex, but in today's world, if an organization does not have a certain level, level of cloud and big data maturity already established, I think it's probably not good to start an IoT effort net new because in today's world, cloud and big data have become very foundational to almost a lot of things. So you got to be able to connect clouds. You got to have your auto provisioning. You got to have your system of record, system of engagement, system of rest, where will you archive data? All those things done through your mind before you start getting. So, so the point, what I'm seeing also is a lot of organizations still at that phase where they're up, they don't have a complete handle on cloud maturity. They're still figuring out, how do I do this in the cloud? How do I do this on on-prem? And there is that mindset of going back and forth. Once, from a technology standpoint, that is established, I think the picture becomes a lot more easier. But the other thing I do want to add is, there has to be, there has to be complete clarity as to who the sponsor is. And what I mean by that is, is the IT, are the IT folks leading the IoT project or the OT folks leading the project? And people talk about the IT divide and OT divide. It's not so much of a divide. I call it simply the implementation arm is the IT side of the house and the OT side is the, um, is the business. It is the machine turbine. It is the pump. It is the 
uh, it is the factory equipment. Now, I'm, I'm a manufacturer of factory, factory equipment. Making it IoT enabled is a nice thing, but it may not be the first thing. First thing I want to do is I want to pump out so many gallons of water efficiently. Yes, I want to control it through IoT. So is that handshake good? That's also a key reason, I believe. Yeah, so what are some of the use cases that we're, you know, we're leveraging today in IoT that, you know, adding value to particular enterprises? And, you know, what are some of the, one of the ones, excuse me, what are some of the use cases we're going to see in 19, 2019 and 2020 coming down the line? And are we going to be any more successful at those use cases than it looks like some of the failures we have today? I believe the failure rate is going to go down significantly. I think the failure rate will be what the success rate is now. You know, in other words, I expect a success rate of 70 to 80 percent in the next three to four years for many reasons. First of all, the early adopters are gone and the early adoption is done and then people have cut their teeth. There's a certain level of maturity available in the marketplace. But also people also realize the economic value that I can apply IoT to 25 different touch points of a giant system. What are the five most valuable to me? And why don't I do that first, get some gains, and then multi-phase it out, if that makes sense. So I would look at industrial IoT. I keep on talking about industrial IoT. I'm not infatuated with it, being an engineer by training and education, but I think just the fact there is enough capital dollars and room for improvement in the industrial IoT systems to make it worthwhile. So, I mean, I was working with a farming company one time and kind of internet of tractors. And so the, their ability to kind of um, uh, monitor production, you know, out at the, uh, the field level and the, um, uh, the barn level was really something I heard, you know, would be on the priority of what they're looking to do and the ability to kind of predict the weather and the ability to kind of monitor the weather internally, and, excuse me, locally you know, at the particular farms and make predictions of that would be, you know, kind of a tier two activity. And so they would, in essence, what you're saying is, are we going after the harder problems first? Are we going after the easier problems first? So the problems are gonna basically, uh, once they're solved, generate the most value. Exactly, that, that's what I'm saying. And I also don't believe this. So I don't believe that a tractor company all of a sudden believes that, or a, or a farm farming company believes that I'm an equipment manufacturer, but data is the bigger asset than the machinery itself. Let's be clear, if I'm buying an earth moving equipment, I am buying it because it can move so much quantity of dirt and rocks around. I'm not buying it for the digital digitization aspect of it, although that's a nice to have. So you really cannot have a company change its core, but you really have to go through the process of value realization and then isolate the three or four cases where the investment is worth it. And get the gains, get people's buy-in, get market share, and then move on, add the next feature list. So one of the things I see, you know, constantly in the IoT market is that the uh, ROI from uh, IoT-based projects is typically, you know, way higher than, you know, most application development kinds of issues. And so they're able to kind of, you know, hit things out of the park. So that being the case, we have this tremendous I, I, ROI multiple on utilization of this technology for most of the companies that employ it. You know, how come it's not higher up in the priority list in, in building IT? And we're, you know, it looks like we're failing here. And I, I probably think we're not just not investing as much time in technology and talent that we need to make these things succeed. You know, so what advice would you give to the CEOs out there, the CIOs out there, in kind of improving their track record in implementing IoT? Um. I believe awareness is definitely one one aspect of it. We as technologists are somewhat guilty of that. that we, we, we tend to get enamored by technology and say IoT. Well, when you go to a business person and you say, I have an IoT thing, the first response would be, are you a technology looking for a solution? I think we've got to switch the conversation around to what, instead of, you know, what does IoT, what are the top three or five things an IoT type of architecture can enable for you? Are those efficiencies of repair? Is it preventive maintenance? Is it notifications? Is it system alerts? Is it a B2B federation? For example, I have a piece of equipment that is going to fail or it's going to need repair. The traditional way would be a light would come on and then that's a warning indicator and the human would call somebody. Well, 
if the if there's a network of already vendors established, why can now that light start blinking in the repair person's office and auto schedule something? So now you've taken out a, an enormous uh, drudgery out of the process by automating that. So you have gotten preventive maintenance, you're saving equipment, you're saving human time, and you're saving workflow. You're making the world of work better for everybody. So one of the things, and this is the last question, one of the things I see as kind of Achilles heel of all this, and it kind of scares scares the heck out of me that we're you know, failing as much, is, is the ability to kind of make security kind of a larger part of this. And um, when I run into IoT projects and I'm doing post triage on these things, I find that security is typically security is going to be an afterthought. Uh, they haven't done the right things in terms of encryption. They haven't done the right things in terms of network security, you know, things like that. And they have just this tremendous hole that's been exposed through these IoT systems that they're building, even though their core systems, which the IoT links into, are going to be fairly well secure, but the IoT system is going to be the Achilles heel to allow people to get in and hack the system. So, do we see that changing and putting additional priority and money into that space? Um, I do agree with you that that is the Achilles heel. Uh, if you have you are you familiar with that? Uh, you must be the thing called there was a there was a security loophole many years called SQL injection. Yeah, yeah, I wrote so, about. It. Yeah. Okay, so so I what what scares me is the equivalent of SQL injection in IoT systems, and when you look at the vulnerabilities that poses, it, it can be mind-boggling because if you can inject some a bad piece of code through any IoT device into the network, and if it can burrow further, you can do a lot of damage. So having said that, security is a concern. I do believe the industry we have to amp up the security. Um, I don't know whether the failure rate is because of low security or just because of people had a hobby or science project and decided to put money into it. I'm not sure the two are correlated. I but think the failure talk- rate is the fact they're not putting enough uh, uh, resources into it uh, to make it successful. And so that, and I'm making an assumption here, but that leads me to believe that they're probably not putting enough in security as well. So that's why I'm jumping to that conclusion. Yes, I would agree. There needs to be more investment in security. Uh, from a people perspective, but there also might be more more R and D, you know, money put into R and D of security so that devices can be secured better. Most great. Definitely. Brad, do you have any questions? Yeah, great show, guys. Really great. Thoroughly enjoyed it this week. Uh, I've got a quick question for you, actually, Ron. I'm not sure if it's uh, you know answered that easily, but you know, from your experience, Ron, um, what's been the industry that's had the biggest uptake and influence of IoT from your personal experience? Um, I believe that the consumer IoT has has occurred much, much faster than industrial IoT. And when I say that, just look at your home, you know, look at the voice activated speaker systems, your humble little DVR, that is an IoT system as well. Look at those bikes I talked about, you know, the, the bikes, birds, you can scooters, you can go anywhere and, and drop them. So I believe there are less barriers of adoption and less less issues of security and risk in in a in the private in a in a home home network. Well, having said that, you don't want people to hack into your home. But there are more more checks and balances in industry. So I believe enterprise is is will happen on a massive scale, but on the consumer side, IoT is exploding everywhere. You look at a wearable, that is an IoT device too. You know, a Fitbit is an IoT device as well. And um, there are, I could go on and on. So I think the, I'm seeing an explosion of 10x almost on the consumer side as compared on the industrial side. Yeah, absolutely. But if you could pick an industry, where would you say IoT is being adopted the quickest? I believe industrial IoT is going to be the top use case. Uh, within that, there are certain segments such as uh, power generation, utilities, smart grids, smart cities that all have a very high potential right now. I also believe that uh, the system of uh, automated maintenance and repair, whether it applies to anything, is going to change dramatically. B2B models, B2, B2C models will completely change because now machines are able to dispatching, are able to dispatch to humans what they need and send the conditions and schedule everything. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for a great C-Suite show this week. I, I think you've, you guys have provided some great insight as always. Uh, it's always great talking about IoT and how it's affecting absolutely everything in our lives. So thank you, Ron. Thank you for coming back on the C-Suite show.
Thank you, Brad. Thank you, David. My pleasure. And thanks, Dave. It's been a pleasure having you on as well, always. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Ryan. Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. Uh, you can get this all on Twitter and LinkedIn and all that stuff as well. So the links are all down in the description box, uh, box below. Uh, Ron is on Twitter, which is at Ron Batra. David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and colleagues. Uh, and when you do subscribe, remember to click the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on any of the future episodes. Ron's with us for all the shows this week, so that's great. So we've got the training show coming up as well. So looking forward to that. If you're watching the C-Suite show, remember to go back and watch the Australia show. There's some great stuff, not just about Australia, but we talk about, you know, IoT throughout the world as well. So it's not just all about Australia. So thanks for watching and until next week.